And it's a beautiful snowy day out here in the D.C. metro area. As you can see on the news, Democrats are still counting ballots across the country. And Fox News has joined the Jim Acosta lawsuit against the Trump White House. Wow. It really kind of shows you something if you're an avid Fox News fan. Uh, Fox is joining CNN, MSNBC, and a whole slew of other people in defending a man that shoved a woman because he was being rude to the president. Almost caused the president to choose to actually end a, a opportunity to actually speak to the press last week because he's selfish, he's self-centered, and doesn't necessarily care about journalism as much as he cares about pushing a narrative on the caravan crisis which everyone just wants you to think isn't that big of a deal. It's really funny. On top of that, we now have Michael Avenetti, who's accused of domestic assault beating a TMZ reporter. This is, this is just so funny. You know, this, this is really probably one of the most funny things I've seen in a while, because the same media that built up Avenetti, CNN alone dedicated hundreds of hours hundreds and hundreds of hours just focusing on talking to him during the peak of the Stormy Daniels lawsuit against the president. Now he is accused of beating a woman. And then you have Jim Acosta, who's constantly talking about all the terrible things that Trump has said and done to women, who shoves a White House intern because, you know, women need to know their place. Don't ever get in front of a man, especially a liberal man when he's trying to speak because it's not your place go go sit down in the corner all women matter until you you know end up in uh what was it oh who was that guy from nbc matt lauer okay remember matt lauer does, does anyone remember that name so matt lauer a defender of women a liberal feminist democrat who was ma masquerading as a journalist <laughs> yeah let, let's just talk about him for a moment he had a rape dungeon in his office and people spoke about him for maybe a week. So Matt Lauer has a rape dungeon in his office. Did you ever see liberals do what they did to Tucker Carlson? No, I don't remember seeing swarms of people asking what was going to happen to Matt Lauer after he was fired. They never swarmed his house and, you know, said we don't tolerate hate, especially people that have rape dungeons and assault staffers and interns at NBC. And then you had Charlie Rose, who was a liberal lion in the media. Everyone loved Charlie, who is sexually assaulting women. And everyone's just like, oh, oh man, no, not Charlie. You're telling me no one knew that that man was sexually assaulting women at CBS for as long as he did. But you see, no one talks about Charlie Rose anymore. They don't want you to talk about Charlie Rose. They don't want you to talk about Matt Lauer. Am I equating what Jim Acosta did to those sexual predators? No, not at all. But see, they, they will defend their own. They will make you forget the incidences. I'm sorry, the instances where they really can't defend something like a Lauer or a Rose situation. But right now, they're protecting Jim Acosta, a man who should have had his White House press credentials revoked a while ago. And they're saying that this has to do with the First Amendment. No, Fox didn't say no one from CNN is allowed to come to his meetings. They just said Jim Acosta because Jim Acosta was rude to the president. He is, I, I believe he was being rude to the other reporters and journalists in the room because God knows that maybe one of them has a question, but no, he wants to hold the mic and then he shoves in a woman. He shoves a young woman too. But I guess maybe because she was white, no one cared. I wonder what would happen if she was black and, you know, if the shoe was on the other foot. You have a Republican journalist with Obama, and that Republican journalist shoves the black Obama staffer. I wonder if there would be this many people jumping in this lawsuit. People often forget that the Eric Holder G DOJ declared a silent war on the media. He tried to have Fox News reporters arrested. He was kicking the Associated Press out of the White House press, press pool. He was spying on people illegally. No one ever cares about an actual war on the First Amendment, but Trump gets rid of someone that, you know, placed his hands on an intern and was rude to the entire White House press corps. And uh, suddenly everyone wants to jump in. It's because 
you know, Fox News jumps in for the same reason everyone else jumps in. It's not about news. These people are all in it together. They might wear different colors and say different things, but they're all in it together. It's all a narrative war. It has nothing to do with reporting the actual news. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand. They'll still think that Fox News is a bastion of conservatism. But you look at what they were doing on November 6th for the midterm coverage, and they were conceding everything on Twitter. I've never seen so many conservatives conservatives actually criticize Fox News's coverage of the election. It was it was hilarious. They're conceding uh, the Florida the Florida governor's race to Gillum before they even start counting. They were conceding everything to the Democrats before they start counting. And yeah, now you know Democrats are still counting vote because for the rest of us our election was last week, but Democrats are still voting. It, it doesn't necessarily seem to matter. And there's going to be probably somebody listening like, no, Fox News still does really, really, really good reporting. And it's like, <sighs> ask yourself the last time Fox News itself actually really reported on something. You want to go ahead and talk about journalists that's actually been, like, investigating important stories during this last midterm election that are still being uncovered now? Laura Loomer, ask yourself, why is it Laura Loomer independently is able to break more stories, uncover more leads, and find more facts to actually dig to the truth of certain things than any of these paid salar salaried reporters? A ask why. She works for herself as an independent investigative journalist. She has very limited resources, but you have these reporters for all of these major news networks that have never broken a story. They're essentially bloggers. What they do is they're essentially just taking stories from other places and they're just giving a slant based off their editorial direction. Most of these people have never reported a story in their life. They've never investigated. They don't know how to curate leads. They don't know how to create a pool of people to speak to. They don't know how to build connections. They don't know how to actually investigate anything because they don't do that. They're operatives of the political partisan establishment. You won't see anyone ever defending Laura Loomer. You won't see Laura Loomer's name on a Pulitzer Prize anytime soon. Laura Loomer, who actually does that stuff. Laura Loomer, who's actually a journalist. Ask yourself, when was the last time Don Lemon reported on a story that he himself actually investigated? When was the last time Jim Acosta went and asked questions that weren't just pushing a partisan agenda? They don't care. Michael Avenetti, uh, let, let's see if he actually continues on what he's saying and he runs for president. You know, let, let's assume in some bizarro world he gets the nomination. Do the Democrats approve of a man who assaults a woman? Because last I checked, you, you believe, if you're a liberal, you believe all victims. You believe all victims. You don't believe any of the women that Bill Clinton raped. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you believe the people that accused Lauer and Rose, but, you know, that's that's under the rug. We've already spoken about that. Why are you bringing it up? Why are you bringing it up? It's sad. It's selective outrage. It's selective attention. Because news is not about reporting the news anymore. News is essentially about pushing a narrative. As we're seeing with this Jim Acosta lawsuit... It has nothing to do with protecting the First Amendment. Because last I checked, he still allowed Jim Acosta to fly with other reporters on a government aircraft to his visit to Europe last week. Yeah, Jim Acosta, the victim of the war in the press. You know, uh, I, I wrote an article recently about this. I think she was Estonian. An Estonian journalist who was investigating corruption within the European Union who was found raped and murdered and her naked body was left in a park. For a story she was investigating. That's a real war in the First Amendment. What Vladimir Putin is doing to journalists for years, killing them in droves. It's such a such a first world privilege. You know, I'm not I'm not about the whole check your privilege thing, but you know, we have a lot of first world privilege. A lot of the problems that we have. My God. We have nothing to complain about. And for Jim Acosta to be some First Amendment martyr, what does that say? Not about him, but what does that say about the whole media establishment itself? <sighs> things, to, things to think on. Take care. I'm going to go shovel snow. Salute to everyone.